Great. So, good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence. And if you haven't lived under a rock or in a shoe the last five years, you also heard about artificial intelligence. You heard about the amazing technology that can play chess at a superhuman level, that can see images that could tag people on Facebook automatically, and it is truly amazing. It is a fantastic technology that has long roots in computer science. And it can even separate, for example, fish types from other fish types, or individuals of fish from other individuals of fish. It can see John the fish in 2018 and recognize again John the fish in 2020, or Don the fish in 2018 and Don the fish in 2020. And what does that mean? Well, it is a fantastic tool for biologists, for example, that used to take up fish and do a little bit of operation on the fish, put it down and then visit the same pond two years ago, two years later, but now they can do it with artificial intelligence much, much more better. And artificial intelligence can, as most of you probably heard, separate cancer cells from non-cancer cells, sometimes even better than medical doctors. Truly amazing. But alongside all these revolutionary technologies that artificial intelligence is, comes the myths. And you've all heard the myths, I'm sure. Someday the robots will take over. They will be smarter than all of us. Someday there will no longer be any more jobs for us because artificial intelligence is becoming so perfect. Someday we will be able to speak to the artificial intelligence as we speak to humans together. And if anyone has ever tried to speak to Siri or Alexa, you know that it's very different speaking to this robot than it is speaking to your wife at home or your boyfriend at home. It's like something completely different. And all of these myths or half-truths or exaggerations is kind of destroying the world of AI because it is such a fantastic technology. But it must mean something for, for example, work life. What is the job of medical doctors, let's say five years into the future? Will the jobs of medical doctors or biologists or teachers or taxi drivers go in the same direction as, for example, telephone operators or people putting in bowling pin boys doing that? What happened to all of them? Well, robots came and took their jobs. And will that happen in the future? Is what is true about the myth of robots replacing all our jobs? Well, truth is, we don't know. And some people are claiming that in 2030, in eight years or so, three billion jobs will be replaced by AI. That's, like, well, that's a lot of jobs being replaced by AI. <coughs> that's almost all jobs being replaced by AI. And if you're watching this TED talk in 2030, it's like, is it really true? I would bet maybe not. Because let's look at the evidence. What does the past tell us? Yes, of course, automation has changed a lot in the past for, for example, telephone operators, for people working in the industry. But for example, banking industry, Many people know that the banking industry used to be very different in the 80s, in the 90s. We went to the bank, we talked to a bank teller, we gave him or her money, she counted, but then automation came. We had the ATM, and even the ATM was automated. Now we have the net bank, the mobile bank, it's all truly automated. The bank sector has already gone through automation. And if you believe the myth that automation replaces jobs, removes jobs, then it must also be true that there's no longer any jobs in the banking sector. But what does the evidence tell us? 
more people are working in the finance sector, in the banking sector than ever before. Automation did not kill the jobs, they created more jobs for the banking sector. So banks are doing okay despite automation. And of course, medical doctors will do okay despite tools being available to them. Biologists will be okay, they will have stuff to do because of automation. In 1997, an AI tool, artificial intelligence tool, replaced the best player in the world, which used to be Gary Kasparov, a human grandmaster, then it was Deep Blue's AI system. About five years ago, the same happened for the complex game of Go, by an AI system by Google DeepMind that played Go at a superhuman level and replaced Leo Zedong. And what does that mean for the world of chess players, Magnus Carlsen and the other people? Well, it's still room for Magnus Carlsen, even though the computers are playing chess at a superhuman level. Magnus Carlsen doesn't meet up to the best computer. But what does he do? Well, he uses the computer as a tool to help himself. So every day he comes in and says, ah, maybe I can learn something from this AI instead of being replaced by it. So AI didn't take Magnus Carlsen's job or Gary Kasparov's job, it helped him. But some people are always calling and saying, ah, Martin, you who work with artificial intelligence, which jobs? Surely there must be some jobs that will be gone. Uh, maybe they will, of course. So this is a dress taken with a picture of a smartphone. And one thing we do is that we take this dress and we generate an artificial supermodel on top of that dress. So when people call me and ask which jobs will be removed because of artificial intelligence, well, supermodels is one of those jobs that surely will be gone. And we, because generating fake humans is something that artificial intelligence does really well. And of course, we know that the pictures we see of supermodels today are already very fake, right? So why do you need a model in the first place? So if there's some jobs that artificial intelligence is replacing, it's certainly supermodels, probably not medical doctors, and probably not bankers, and some jobs here and there. Here's another example. And the other myth is that artificial intelligence is becoming smarter than us. We've seen that in the past. We've seen AI 10 years ago being less smart than AI is now, and surely it must increase to become smarter and smarter and smarter. So one of the technologies, one of the topics we work on is nutrition. So the idea is that if you're supposed to go on a special diet, maybe you're supposed to lose weight, or for some other reason you're supposed to eat specifically, you should, you should go on a diet. And you should write down exactly everything you eat. And the nutritionists, they tell us, ah, people do that for hmm, two days, maybe three, and then they say, ah, they start to cheat a little bit. So like, ah, maybe I ate one bread today, not three. Maybe I don't write the potato chips today. So let's do it a little bit differently. We can make AI help. So you can take a picture of your food with your app, and the AI could tell what you're eating. It becomes a little bit easier to tell the truth with AI. Okay. And then we did that, of course. Some of my students were working on that, and they told me that this AI is, with almost 100% accuracy, being able to tell exactly what you're eating. But not only that you eat, cheese and butter, which is this typical Norwegian breakfast, but also that you eat 4.4 grams of butter, 38 grams of bread, etc. So almost perfect accuracy. And then we, then I started to think, oh, so how can you know that there's 3.8 grams of butter on that bread? It seems, it seems too good to be true. And then we realized something. So the nutritionists, 
that were supposed to give us some data and Excel spreadsheet were very nice to us, but they, in addition, they added a post-it note on the left side here, right side there, and the AI doesn't read this post-it note, it doesn't at all care about what's on this side of the picture, it only cares about what's on the post-it note. And then, of course, it's easy to understand that it detects butter and cheese and bread because it's written there in Norwegian. And when they removed the post-it note, it became much harder for the AI to tell that this was bread and cheese and grapes and butter and especially the amount. So yes, AI is super smart, but it lacks this type of smartness that we humans have. Here's another example. A game we played in Germany. Some people said, let's add AI to cameras. We can have cameras that follow the ball in a soccer game, football game. And that worked perfectly every day, except one day a referee decided to wear a special uh, haircut dressed as a ball. So his haircut was the backside of uh, a football, soccer ball, and then the AI, of course, became very confused. Ah, uh, let's film the backside of the referee, and then let's film the football a little bit, and let's film the backside of the referee, let's film the football a little bit. It's fun for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, but two times 45 minutes, this is not fun at all. Why? Because the AI lacks the intelligence we have. It is super intelligent for some parts, playing chess, recognizing images, but it's not intelligent enough to say that sometimes, not very often, but sometimes referees have football-like heads. And, that's different. and this is problematic because According to some of the myths, we don't really understand what AI does. It is some sort of black box that is there for some magical reason and what load of bullocks. Of course we understand what AI does. Of course we understand what can and cannot be done with AI. Just imagine somebody working on a car and saying, I want to create a car. I don't really understand what it does, but I want to create it. He will not succeed. And same goes with AI. So if you say, I don't, we don't really understand what AI does, but we want to create it, that is a very strange myth for me. Of course we understand. There's no such thing as black, black box AI. Some parts are difficult to understand, yes, but we certainly understand what we do. Otherwise, we wouldn't make it work, I trust you. But there's certainly trickery, absolutely. This is not a recent picture, this is a very old one from something called Mechanical Turk. Mechanical Turk was a chess playing robot at the end of the 1700s, beginning of the 1800s. And it played chess at a almost grandmaster level. Uh, and people were amazed. Oh, there's a lot of gears inside there. They open some hatches. Ah, it looks very technical. It looks like a very advanced clock. So it must be okay. So if you just have enough gears inside a clock, it must be able to play chess, people thought. And of course, we 2021 people, we know that you cannot put a lot of gears inside a machine and expect it to play chess. It's ridiculous. This mechanical Turk even played Napoleon Bonaparte, and at the end it did a salute. Like this. So, so it should be a bit, uh, you should be a little bit skeptical when your machine does a salute to you, but okay. So one day, it was burning in, the in a building, and inside the building was the mechanical turn. And what do you know? A little hatch opened on the backside, and a little short man ran outside the mechanical turn. Because inside, of course, was a very good chess playing man, a short one that hit on the right feet. And, but today, we are much smarter. We wouldn't fall for that trick. Obviously. So this is another robot. It's called Sofia. Uh, Sofia talks with uh, our Prime Minister, Anna Solberg. And uh, Sophia, there's no person hiding inside Sofia, but there are persons hiding in the reach of Wi-Fi connection. So when you talk to Sofia, which is claimed to be almost alive, which is claimed to have citizenship in Saudi Arabia, it is all scripted and it is all fake. It is nothing 
different than the Mechanical Turk. It's just with Wi-Fi and rules and what do you know? So this is Sofia talking to Anna Solberg. This is my robot, Milfred, talking to Anna Solberg as well uh, on TV2 uh, on Friday night. And of course, that's on my bucket list to have a new robot talk to the Prime Minister on Primetime TV. Perfect. It worked well. It had or it had a tendency to interrupt Anna Solberg at specific times when it didn't want to be interrupted. And of course, this is what they showed on TV. This is what another person took a picture of. This is me hiding behind the sofa, programming Milfred while Anna Solberg was getting ready to talk. <laughs> so talking to AI is something that is hard. Artificial intelligence becoming intelligence at the level of HAL 9000 uh, or at the level of matrix robots, maybe, but so is getting visitors from outer space tomorrow. That's also a maybe. AI is becoming more and more powerful, but super level intelligence is certainly far from reach. And why is that? Well, the reason is that in order to make intelligence outside of the human body, you need to certainly understand what intelligence is. We have an inch, we have an inkling, we have an understanding, but we don't really know why some of my colleagues are more intelligent than me. There's something about my brain, something about my neurons. This guy called the Flying Taylor, he had the idea that some day in the future, he was in the late, or the beginning of the 1900s, man would fly. So he did everything he saw around him that flew, birds and bats and bugs had wings and they flapped tremendously. So he said, uh, if man or woman, human, should be able to fly, it must be the same way. I just need to flap constantly and then I will fly. Of course, this didn't end very well. He jumped out of a tower and flapped dramatically and he didn't fly because he didn't understand the physics of flight. But when we did, certainly we were able to fly. We were able to exceed beyond what birds can. So I can fly from Europe to United States in less than five hours. No bird can ever do that. And there's no reason to think that artificial intelligence is any different. But it must mean that we first need to understand what intelligence is. Thank you. <laughs>